Hey guys, this is Mike coming at you today from Player One Video Games with another Storytime uh, series. Uh, this is our second video in hopefully 52 more, 50 more videos of uh, wonderful goodness about, it's kind of really, what I'm trying to do with these videos, uh, I don't know if I even explained it in the last one, is kind of give you guys the feel of what was it really like, what was these, what was these systems like really to own or to uh, see in the store or the feeling that you got when you played them back in the original days uh, when they first came out and did I own them or, or uh, what did I think of them too so saying that let's start we did the Atari 2600 last video so um, and, and uh, we're gonna start from there basically and the systems that came after that anything pre nes so castro ask me what is that system right there mike did i own that did you own that did i own <clears throat> this magnavox odyssey 2 uh no i did not and i'll tell you why i didn't let me tell you the first time i saw one was in a furniture store right i think it was lax furniture one of the uh, uh, lesser known store and that's kind of where these guys were sort of more sold at odd places you know um they weren't front and center at toys r us hmm. or or, or uh, you might have seen them at radio shack a little bit but they were always pushed back it was the atari first you know because uh, this one came out right after the atari and um of course it's got the got the uh the first home console was the first one of these magnavox odyssey one uh, that came out when I was in diapers. So, uh, and that thing is really just a, a bad pong machine. I like that. I like the the cartridge there. Oh, how, this how one? It's, yeah, look at that. This is a neat cartridge. It's got the handle on it and everything. So the first time I played this uh, was in a lax furniture store. And what did I think of it? I thought, uh, man, okay it's games it's it's okay is it cool not really well maybe a little bit how did it play uh well i had my atari at the time and i thought this is not the best i would kind of feel sorry for somebody who got one for christmas when they could have had an atari for probably the same price so it was so it was better i mean an atari was better way better graphically I'm way better graphically yeah um the only claim to fame on it on it was of course pickaxe speed because it was the not even I don't even know how they got stopped from producing that game because it was supposed to be a Pac-Man clone but to me it wasn't even close to Pac-Man did what did you have you played that one I have not well I mean it is it is very Pac-Man like but it's not and so that was the only reason people bought this one was for that uh um Casey Munchkin is what's the name of it Casey Munchkin okay and when, so the first time I ever tried it was at Lax, and I'm talking when I tried it, it was for about five minutes. The first time I really tried it for a long time, my best friend who lived right next door to me, who was not a game player, wasn't into electronics at all, his parents went away for the weekend. We were about 12 or 13. And so he had all his presents under the Christmas tree already. It was about three or four days before Christmas, and there they all sat, just looking just uh, scrumptious his his gifts <laughs> so he said Mike let's open my gifts and see what I got I said okay so we carefully opened them and one of them was a TI uh, something calculator mm -hmm. uh, and another one was the Magnavox Odyssey 2 so we hooked it up I was excited I was like oh man all right let's try it out so uh, he did not have Casey Munchkin he had I think it was pickaxe Pete and a racing game a football game a couple games on there and when we played it, I was just so underwhelmed. I was kind of ready to stop playing and never play it again. That's how I felt, you know, with with about this Magnavox Odyssey 2 at the time. Because you know, All right, sorry about that. So we're back. And so I don't know where we left off exactly. But so we opened up, we played it. And I thought, man, I'm ready never to play it again. So that was kind of the feel of the system. It was incomplete a little bit. It felt just not made for gaming i think they try to do a you know since it had the keyboard on it they try to make it a little bit more of an education machine a little bit and um it wasn't horrible by any means but when you had the atari and then television was out you're like ah, ah you're kicking this thing to the curb i never wanted to play it again so the intellivision tell us about the intellivision totally Mike. different story 
How was your How was your experience with the Intellivision? It was 1981, and luckily the apartment complex I lived in had a Kmart within walking distance. Kmart again. Now Kmart was way bigger than Walmart before, you know, in, in, during that time. And K, every Kmart had not everyone maybe, but this one had a, an Atari hooked up, 2600, and an Intellivision hooked up. And when I got my Atari, the Intellivision wasn't out yet. It came out right after, and I remember seeing baseball on the TV at Kmart, and I started foaming at the mouth. I went, oh my God, how in the world am I going to get my hands on one of these? And my, my gears were going in my mind, how can I get one of these? We can, I can't believe we even have an Atari. We can barely afford that one system. So my, my dreams got squashed very quickly. My, my, I could not formulate in my brain how I could ever uh, uh, get one of these. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I went to Kmart every day, every day, and played. They had auto racing, they had baseball, they had football up there, and I would just rotate those games. They had a little push button, and I would play these games as long as I could. I loved it. I'm talking way better than the Atari 2600. That Running Man, the, uh, you know, every sport town, I love sport games uh, always growing up. Uh, the baseball was was just amazing on this controller because you had all all the positions on the baseball you hit it you know catcher pitcher uh, first baseman second you know second okay. baseman how was this <clears throat> controller overall though it was pretty crappy it was a horrible horrible controller uh we'll talk about there are worse controllers but this sucker sucked and uh, the atari joystick was way better um so i never owned one of these when they came out I just went to Kmart every day and played it. And luckily, about a year later, my best friend uh, uh, now, uh, when I met him, he actually had one. He was not a game player either. So, and he had Dungeons and Dragons. And my God, I was into the board game Dungeons and Dragons at the time. I had that first red box set that ever came out. And so I'd make my own maps. And so when he had that D&D, &D, I was just, I spent the night at his house and I played it. We, I played it all night and I kind of ignored him a little bit. You know, I said, come on, let's play D&D. He's like, nah, nah, it's all right. And so this one right here to me was twice as good as an Atari 2600 at the time. Uh, but why didn't it beat out the Atari? Two things, there was $100 more. It was almost double the price of an Atari 2600. Sheesh. And it didn't have as many arcade big titles like Centipede at the time. You know, they did eventually come out slow. Uh, the Donkey Kong was decent on it. Um, is that what we're watching right now? Or is that Coco Vision? That is the Coleco Vision. <laughs> Coco Vision. All right, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, the Intellivision, I never got to own one until I didn't own my Intel. I, I have owned all of these later, but it wasn't until eBay came out when I, I think I finally got one of these. So, you were the bridesmaid, never the bride of the Intellivision. That's right. That's right. So, I loved, I love it though. I love this one. It was an amazing system. And so the 5200, did I ever see it in stores? Not really. Uh, it was, it, this system came and went so quickly. It's so big. You know what, it, it, it is gigantic, but to me, it looks like a, like a spaceship would look in 1983 or something, you know, that's wedgy. I really like the look of this thing, but you're right, it is gigantic. Um, why did it fail? Partially, like we said in the last video, it was mainly old arcade ports. But I remember at my other friend's house who had one, trying it, hooking it up, and I, I said, this controller is really cool. It looks like a stick shift on a car with a boot on it. You know, mm -hmm. I said, man, and it, you know, it's, it's, the buttons are mushy, it's nice, it's got a number pad, the joystick feels great, right? Supposedly the first analog joystick. So the first game I ever tried was Pac-Man and I kept dying instantly. I was like, what is going on? Well, this joystick does not center back quickly. Ugh. So when you're playing Pac-Man, you know, you just let it go. When you're playing, you just let it go and up and you, know, you hit it before. So you had to get that right in the center and you, because it's more analog. So you, you couldn't get this thing in the center. That's more handwork for you. It, it, it's, and it was impossible to play Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man with this. You know, like Centipede was a little bit better than the Atari maybe, but still saying all that, the nobody wanted to play those ports. And this thing to me came and went so fast. 
Like it was barely on the map for a year. So it's just better just to keep with your 2600 that you already had at home. Keep your 2600. Don't you know? Don't waste your money on this. But I think if if Activision, here's my opinion, if if Atari wasn't so crappy to Activision and and David Crane and those guys, mm -hmm. if Activision would have truly made a lot of games for this one, brand new IPs and not just Pitfall 2 or something like that. Um, or River Raid 2 or whatever, I think it could have made it. I really do because the powerhouse at the time, the Neo Geo of its time, of this era, was the ColecoVision. Um, and the reason I said ColecoVision earlier is because I've, when I first opened the shop 13 years ago, I remember when the, one of the first customers came in, he says, what is that, a ColecoVision? I've never seen that before. And I just died laughing on the inside. So, so, so what's your first? My first time I my first experience with a cold co vision was a commercial on TV and of course it was playing Donkey Kong and at the time it had the closest arcade port it had the closest arcade port uh, of Donkey Kong you could get at home and so but I saw the commercial and I went oh my mind was blown but it was three hundred dollars brand new in 1982 oh my goodness so that for in 83 money might as well have been one million dollars it could have been a million dollars it didn't matter 300 was the same as a million so me. this is the playstation 5 of 83 I, I would call it more the neo geo the neo geo okay three um it it was so it was on a different planet almost uh the games were just so close to the arcade um in this at least you know these joysticks i mean th these look kind of similar mm -hmm. but at least this one's centered back so it was more playable it was still a little hard to play this thing but saying that okay no i never owned one when it came out and actually 100 percent honesty i never even saw one wow i never even saw one until probably the late 80s somewhere at a probably garage sale or something um it was because the reason you didn't see this is because it came out the year everything crashed gotcha right? so and and so let's talk about the crash real quick all right a lot of people talk say that come in here at this shop and say talk about the crash of the video game crash of 83 84. how was the video game video game crash of 83 84. It didn't really exist to a consumer. That the crash is to the corporations, the companies who made the games. Those guys. Um, it wasn't like an actual depression or no, anything. No, I, 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 until the, that term came way later, right? The crash of '83, '84. So how how was I in '83, '84 as an Atari player and television player? I was great. Hey, you know why? Because you could go to your local Ecker Drugs. And buy a five dollar game you could go to um uh toys r us had five dollar clearance actually donkey kong on the 2600 was 25 cents yeah it was older but they still more making games but it, it was it was like you know all the shovelware that's on the wii mm -hmm. it's just like that that so that's what actually caused it's there was tons of shovelware it was tons of games let me grab one over here like this company right here um, was the biggest contributor to the crash data age these games were five dollars at Ecker drugs and they were basically one screen right uh, like a donkey Kong with a single screen it was, it was those type of games they were quick games you played them for five ten minutes and you were done with them you had to find something in the game that was fun or, or do over and over again so the crash basically was Wii shovelware, but imagine if the Wii was the only system out that was doing any 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 good. It was ninety say this Wii was ninety percent of the share uh, market, and you had all the shovelware that's on the Wii. What would happen? You you'd kind of get tired of it, but you'd still play it. You'd play that shovelware, and you would you didn't know in eighty three eighty four that the consumers were I mean the the corporations were having trouble. You had no idea about that no clue so you just played what was out there i was playing kangaroo in 80 you know uh, uh until 86. rest in peace kangaroo rest in peace kangaroo 
So I was playing, you know, pole position because games back then stayed on the shelves for two, three years um, until they got to your area. You know, some things were spread everywhere, like Pac-Man and ET, of course. By '83, things were spread out, but the early '80s, things went very slowly. And and at the time, you couldn't buy all the games. And so, not you know, it, it wasn't like you could watch videos on somebody playing Space Invaders on YouTube or something. So, and say, say Space Invaders came out in 79 uh, on the Atari, and it was 1984, and you had never owned it, you could go buy it still at the store. And then you would play it, you know, so... It, it was still new. It was still new and fresh to, to you. Uh, you had friends who you traded with here and there, but it wasn't like it is now. Uh, on, on that where every single household had an Atari. It wasn't that way. Um, it, it was here and there, it was sporadic on that. Uh, so the crash of 83, that might should have been a different video, but <laughs> I'd just say it really didn't exist for the consumer exactly. It, 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 I, I don't partake to that. So that 5200 came and went. Right. What was after that? The Coleco. Uh, came after that so that that was a blip on the radar because of the crash you know right um the the corp the corporation cra corporate crash of video games uh and so what was my feel about about the the dilution the diluted video game market right i didn't have an issue i kind of liked it you cheap know, games right cheap games is how i looked at it um and that's kind of how I look at it. And so the, the companies were just, for some reason, kind of done. You know, fresh new games after 84 didn't, didn't really exist, except for like ones I showed you, the data age, mm -hmm. those $5 games. Uh, I don't remember too many Atari games. And it was, you know, by then you had to go buy that Radio Shack, things like that. I'm getting long-winded on this. So enough of the crash, let's move on. 7,800, right? The 7,800, officially came out in what 83 or they made it in 83 mm -hmm. but you didn't see it in 83 the first time i saw a 7800 was when the nes came out right because they actually shelved it yeah and so the 7800 you would the, that christmas and it wasn't even the very first christmas when the nes hit hard that, that in, in, in 85 the new york launch which i don't count it wasn't until a year later and then this one came out at the same in Christmas of '86. You could I remember walking into KB Toys, all right, walking into KB Toys, and seeing this one, and seeing an Atari. I mean, seeing an NES next to it, and going, "What poor soul is going to get this sucker for Christmas?" Right? I felt bad. That's how I felt. I said, "Oh no, somebody's going to have a 7800 under their tree, and they're wanting an NES." Oh no. And I'm going, oh no. And the worst thing about it, even worse than that, in '87. The next Christmas, the Atari Junior, Atari Junior, I remember seeing it for like thirty-nine bucks, right? So they tried to bring the Atari Twenty-Six Hundred back, and our was in KB Toys, and looking at the NES games, and here's and it was Christmas time, and a couple of grandparents went, "Oh look, Wooden Junior just loved this Atari Twenty-Six Hundred Junior. <laughs> Let's get it for him." Because all the time, all they knew was Atari. All they knew was that. So they got their poor grandson in Atari 2600 Junior. Oh. Uh, for Christmas that year when the NES was sitting there just, you know, waiting to be played. And so. his friends are playing Mario and he is oh, playing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. E.T. Oh, yeah, E.T. <laughs> although, although, you know, like my, my experience with the 7800, I didn't get one of these until probably eBay came out. And then I actually, actually the games are pretty solid on it. You know, Asteroids is a great translation, but once again, old um, arcade ports again. So, you know, that's, you knew that Atari was, was just dead. Even, even when the Lynx came out or the uh, Jaguar came out way later. So this, this sucker killed, you know, the Atari. Um, and we have a couple other things here. You know, these, these were, were um, expansion. This was an expansion pack you could put in inside your Coleco and play Atari 2600 games. And they actually won the lawsuit. How crazy is that? That's insane. For you know that wouldn't that wouldn't even that would have got stopped production. You know the <laughs> second it hit the shelves and never saw you know the light of day. Now. Right. Did you ever use one of those? No, I never saw one of these in person. Back really? Then. No, I never did. Now I've seen one of these and I, and they had these hooked up in the store. The IntelliVoice hooked up to your Intellivision, it was the first time you could hear voices on a video game with a B-52 bomber. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, yeah, it was hooked up in stores. The Intellivision actually was 
really well um, distributed. If you saw an Atari, you were going to see an Intellivision. Okay. Store. Was it just because it was made by Mattel, so they had like I their was, foot in the door? Know, probably right, and they had a lot of commercials out. They spent a lot of money, and it was a better system than the fifty two hundred. You know, uh, and it, you know, I, I I saw I was watching. This is the last thing, guys, and we'll we'll head head out. But I was watching a video on. If you think about this, in nineteen seventy seven to eighty one, what systems were there that came out? Uh, it was the Atari 2600 and maybe a crappy Valley Astrocade, right? Right. That nobody cared about. Uh, maybe some other Pongs. They were clump Pongs. Pongs. But well, there was no other cartridge system until 81 with the with Intellivision. So there was a four year gap there, right? And why? I just watched the video. It was so cool. Uh, what's his name? The godfather of Atari. Um, Nolan Bushnell. Nolan Bushnell said how he accomplished that was he had deals with four or five of the major chip makers exclusivities and he would pay like fifty thousand dollars each for them to exclusively make him a chip and then he would go oh let's let's change this up a little bit and he'd go to the next one do the same thing and so nobody else could buy chips from them Ooh. and so that's why it took forever for another system to come out because you know the atari blew up in 79 you know with the space invaders so that and i just watched that video like a couple of days ago it was so cool I've never seen it before uh, so saying that hey guys we have all these game systems and games for them in stock um you know i know this is pre-nes yeah we do have adapters to hook them up to your modern tv and they actually look great the 2600 looks amazing on a, on a flat screen no matter how big you blow it up uh, just because of the way it's it's made but there are some good games on these uh systems that you can play uh so saying that hey come on down to play around check these out it'll be a great time